Hi guys! Today I'm very happy to be back with a video that's... Uh, well, I should have done this video way earlier and I'm really... I don't know, I'm kind of excited and a bit nervous as well to come and talk about this subject because I feel like this is not something that's talked about very much. Um, and uh, yeah, we are going to speak the truth, at least my truth. So I hope that's interesting for you and I hope that maybe other teachers out there can relate and we can exchange about that. But before I get into the real topic of the video, I want to thank the sponsor of this video because this video is once again very, very, very kindly sponsored by Skillshare. So in case you do not know, but I'm sure you do know, Skillshare is an online learning platform which is really great and that I have been using for years and I was using it before I was partnering with them. So that should tell you a lot about how much I really enjoy Skillshare. So Skillshare is, as I said, an online learning platform with thousands of options as to what you can learn. As I've said before, they have such a great variety of um, disciplines and activities and hobbies and fields of interest that you can find classes about and it's so nice if you want to exchange with people, if you want to have classes but also follow your own rhythm, if you're a beginner in let's say photography or if you want to learn more about editing or if you want to learn more about digital drawing which is something I'm really into as well uh, or if you are into I don't know finances and learning how to be a bit more organized I just really like Skillshare and I think they have such a great offer and a great a range of classes, different kinds of classes and different kinds of activities. It's also very affordable. It's only $10 a month, but if you want to try it for free, you can click on the link down below and the first thousand people will click on the link, will get a free membership trial, a premium membership trial. So yeah, personally, I really enjoyed their classes on writing. I love their classes on illustration, digit digital drawing, but also gouache. And I also really like just regular and traditional sketches. I think, you know, I like the balance of both. Lately I've been really trying to draw a lot more and I think I will talk about that in another video. I'm really all about trying to learn how to use Procreate at the moment and get a hold of you know, Procreate and be really comfortable with it. So I've been really enjoying this class because it's so... Um, efficient and very simple and it's you know step by step explaining to you how you can use procreate to do your illustration and i really like that so once again thank you skillshare for sponsoring this video and if you're interested i suggest you click on the link down below let's get into the video so as you may know, I am a teacher. I've been a teacher for a few years now. I was a French teacher before, French as a foreign language. So I was basically teaching French to foreigners. Did that for about three years, I think. Then I went through the tedious competitive exams that you have to go through if you want to be a teacher in the national education system here in France. And I am now a teacher in middle school and high school. I teach French, which is basically grammar and vocabulary and also, of course, mostly literature. I am a literature teacher. That's what's put on my contract. So even though people call me a French teacher, I like to say that I teach literature because that's really what I teach. Um, and I've been teaching literature in middle school and high school for about, well, three years as well. This year is my third year. And I won't lie, it's, you know, it's a very, very demanding job. It's very exhausting. It's very time consuming. It is draining. It has a lot of ups and downs. I'm going to try and focus on the positive as well in this video, but I want to be really honest and I think that's why you're here for. So I am probably going to, you know, say some things that are maybe a bit harsh and a bit negative, but it's not because I'm bitter and it's not because I am, you know, not loving teaching, I do love teaching, but it's because teaching is difficult and is even and is made even more difficult by you know the different situations and factors that come into play. So let's get into the questions. Okay, so what do you like most and what do you like less in teaching? I think this is an easy answer. What I like the most is probably two things. I love being 
um, around students. I really love exchanging with students. I love creating bonds and relationship with students. That's really something I value very dearly, which is also a bit of a struggle because then it really like for me if I don't like a class or if I don't get on well with a class or if for some reason relationships are a bit tricky it gets very difficult for me to enjoy my job so that's you know not always really great so that's the first thing I like the second thing I like is just talking about literature and you know sharing text and my passion with others even though uh, most students do not really like reading and do not like literature it can be disheartening sometimes, but it's also great when you have this little spark in some students' eyes and they're like, oh yes, I understand, oh yes, this text is amazing. Um, it's quite rare, but it's very worth it, I would say. The things I like the least, um, I really dislike everything that has to do with, you know, um, paperwork and meetings and uh, being in touch with parents and having to... You know, always kind of be, um, I would say, what would be the word? I, I'm not really sure how to explain that, but I feel like teaching is unfortunately, ultimately, at the end of the day, such a small part of what we do. And I would really like to be able to do that and only that. I don't want to have to deal with other external factors and I don't want to have to fill in all those paperwork and have all of these meetings and fill in every day the schedules and everything online. This can be really demanding and what I also like the least is how underpaid we are and how people treat us. I think society really has to, you know, change the way they see teachers and the way they treat teachers uh, because it's, you know, we are not very respected, I would say. Okay, next question. You're a young teacher. Thank you. Not really, but okay. So do your pupils or students respect you as much as older teachers? Um, I would say respect, yes, but they do behave differently. Um, this is not only due to age. I think this is also about how you interact with students. And I'm a very laid back teacher for most, I would say in most cases, but um, I do not feel disrespected. I don't think I've ever been really for the moment disrespected really truly like constantly by students. I do have really good relationships with students most of the time. Doesn't mean always but most of the time. Um, I think that having some sort of connection with, with the students and being close to them in a way, yes age-wise that also plays a part in that, really helps build respect and understanding and um, doesn't mean that if you're an older teacher you cannot have this connection I do think it is possible but I don't think that students will disrespect you because you're younger um, it just takes different um, tools I would say to bring them to respect you do you always want to be a teacher Yes and no. I've always wanted to be the three things. I've always wanted to be either a teacher or a psychologist or a writer. So I still want to write, but I definitely um, stopped thinking I would be a, t uh, a, a writer and that would be my full-time job. That's not something I even dream of anymore, unfortunately, perhaps, but that's, that's how it is. Um, I also just didn't really want to be a psychologist anymore. Really quickly on, I discovered that was not something I really felt like I wanted to do. So teacher was what I was left with. So yeah. This question is a bit more specific, but I'm pretty sure it could be helpful to some people. So um, I'm sure you will talk about it, but maybe would you talk about your experience as a teacher with social anxiety? So I've always been very clear, at least here in English, um, about the fact that I do suffer from social anxiety and I also have depression um, and lately it's all turned into some sort of agoraphobia so actually um, currently I am teaching from home which is not the case for other teachers at my school I am doing this thanks to my supervisor being very um, understanding and also because the students um, will benefit from this but um, yeah being um, 
depressed and are having anxiety and suffering from agoraphobia really makes it difficult for me to teach at the moment. Um, social anxiety in itself was okay to deal with, sort of, but um, the other health conditions that I have have made it really difficult for me to teach at the moment. So personally, and once again, it's difficult and I mean, it's different for everybody and it's diff difficult for me to give you like an answer that will be generic but I would say that for me personally what's difficult is not really teaching in itself once again it is all the things that surround teaching it's you know um, I don't know the um, going to work and coming back home it's uh, dealing with um, just being exhausted from being around people all day it's the pressure and the anxiety that you have because of parents and because of maybe some colleagues um, and the pressure that you have if you are teaching to students who will go through exams at the end of the year. Um, so for me, I've always felt comfortable in the classroom, I've always felt comfortable with the students, but I've always felt very anxious and very uncomfortable with everything else, like the schedule, being on time, the you know, if you have deadlines for whatever it could be, if you have meetings, if you are supposed to call parents and all of those things, they're really tricky and I feel like I get really, really, really exhausted easily because of being around people, the general agitation and the noise and everything and that's something that's really difficult to recover from and it's difficult to balance, you know, your personal life and your work life when you have anxiety and you're a teacher um, but yeah I'm sorry I don't have like amazing tips because right now I am struggling but but yeah that's an honest answer for you so do you have favorite students and students that you don't like at all and how do you deal with that I really wanted to talk about that because I think it is you know something that most people who are not teachers are kind of curious about and I think it's a little bit taboo kind of but yes of course I have students that I like more than other students I would say it is just a normal thing um, you know you have colleagues that you appreciate more or that you vibe more with and that's really just the same with students some students you know connect well with you some students are maybe uh, more interested in your subjects, some students resemble you a little bit, some students are maybe more open to exchanging with you and of course you create relationships that are different with each and every student. I don't think it is an issue at all. Um, I give the same quality of teaching to all my students. I grade and mark them all the same um, but I will have students with whom I feel more comfortable and students that you know I don't mind uh, chatting with at the end of the class, students that you know I f feel more connected with and I think that's the case for almost all teachers but the key is really to not let it interfere with the work side of things which means that you have to teach all of them equally and you have to treat them equally of course. What other subjects would you like to teach apart from literature? Um, I would like to go back to teaching French to foreigners. I really miss doing that. I loved, loved teaching French to foreigners. I think it was such an amazing job. I would really like to teach English, actually. Sometimes I think, oh, wow, wouldn't it be nice to be an English teacher? I don't know why. I think maybe because I miss teaching French as a foreign language so I'm like the closest thing to it in the national education system would be teaching English because that's the only language I could teach so sometimes I think about that and um, I would like to teach philosophy if I could like if I had studied philosophy I think that's something I would be interested in but I do not to have the qualifications to teach philosophy at all. Do you think you will be a teacher your whole life? Mm, yes and no. I think it depends on what you understand by being a teacher. I do not see myself being a teacher in the situation that I am in right now and the conditions in which I work for the rest of my life. I don't necessarily see myself being a teacher in the national education system forever. But I do see myself always sharing with people and teaching them in a way and giving them what I can give them, tools and knowledge and I 
think this will always be a big part of my life and a big part of my identity. So I think I will always be teaching in a way or another. But I don't think I will be a teacher as I am right now for the rest of my life. It is way too exhausting and way too underpaid and I don't think I could do it, unfortunately. So how do you deal with authority? I am a future teacher. So this is a very interesting topic that could actually be a whole video. Authority is something that I feel very conflicted about and I have mixed feelings about it because some people will say that authority is something that people give you because of the way you behave and the way you act they will naturally kind of give you this authority and treat you in a way that says that. I don't think that's necessarily true. I Honestly, I think talking about teaching is tricky because it really depends on the kind of students or the kind of pupil that you have um, in the class with you. Some classes I need to be a bit more, I don't know, strict and I need to play this authority kind of figure role that I don't feel very comfortable with, honestly. And some classes I just never really even think about it because they respect me, I respect them and we just want the class and the course to be enjoyable so we know where to when and where to stop, you know. Um, everyone has a different style when it comes to handling a relationship with students. Personally, I am not really big on authority. I am pretty laid back, as I said. I just have certain things that I will not accept and certain things that I will always want my students to respect. Um, I'm very clear about that at the beginning of the year, repeat that throughout the year so that it's very present in everybody's minds and um, usually that's enough but once again I am lucky and privileged enough to work in a school where students are pretty nice, we don't have you know behavior issues, we don't have violence very much um, so I would probably give you a totally different answer if I were to work in a school where students spit on you or insult you or even physically assault you. Of course, I would give you different answers. But once again, in an, in an ideal world, kind of, I would say that authority is not essential. It's not the key. I would say that it's more about wanting to uh, treat each other in the best way possible because students are capable of thinking like that even though they're teenagers or even sometimes kids um, they don't think of it as we do adults but they can really understand that and in good situations good circumstances I would say that this is what I would rely on more than authority I'm not sure that's really very um, clear but yeah Okay, last question, last but not least. How do you balance handle engaging and, relationship and, and relating and keeping a professional distance? That's a really good question. That's the thing I struggle with the most, I think, besides, you know, all the administration and paper and schedule and deadlines and time and everything. I am a person of feelings and emotions and I love people and I love my students. What I struggle with the most is that work basically never ends for me. Even when I'm at home, I always think of work. I always think of work because as a teacher, you bring back, you bring up work home, basically. You have your tests to mark, you have your classes to prepare, you have the books to read, you have other things to do and you know, we we really do work a lot besides the times we're in the classrooms. Um, but on top of that, personally, I think of my students. If I know that a student is struggling with something, I will think about it. If I know that a student is really um, worried about, you know, I don't know, their future, or class they will take next, I think about it. If I know that they failed the test, I always think what could I do to help them, was it my fault, did I explain it poorly, did I do this, did I do that. Um, when I am when I miss work because I'm sick or whatever, I feel guilty for the students and um, 
I do understand that you need to kind of cut things and sometimes let your mind think of other things and I understand that you know you have to keep a healthy distance and obviously I do keep this distance like my students are not my friends but I do find it difficult to sometimes give them enough attention but also kind of protect myself and I also find it difficult to Maybe because I'm still a bit young and maybe because I remember being a teenager so well, sometimes there are things they go through that I can relate to kind of strongly and sometimes I want to tell them, you know, this is going to be okay. I want to tell them a bit more about things on a personal level just to show them that life is full of surprises and different experiences and that, you know, it's really okay to feel that way sometimes. Um, so how do you do that? How do you find a good balance? I don't know. I think it really depends on the class, on the students. I think it depends on who you are. I think it comes with time. Personally, and that's really my personal opinion on that, I think that there are many people who want to make teaching a lot like a regular job or we want to make it less personal than it really is. We see those students so much, so often. Um, basically students are really the people I spend most of my time with when you think about it. Sometimes I see them six hours a week. That's a lot. Um, so it is, in my opinion, only natural and normal that you get um, emotionally involved to a certain degree and I think that it really depends on you and the students and the class and the environment and the situation um, but I do think it is a job um, where you have to be emotionally involved and it takes time to find the balance and I haven't found it yet I think but I disagree with people who will say it's only a job, don't make it personal, you don't want the students to like you, you don't have to like the students. That's not how I feel about this job. That's just my personal opinion. I will stop there. I think I answered a few questions already. Um, let me know if you're interested in videos about teaching. I could do other videos about that topic. I hope, hopefully this helped or interested at least some of you. Um, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to check out the Skillshare link in my description below and I will see you soon. Bye!